Hello everybody and welcome back to another Captain's Academy episode with your instructor Chase and today I'm going to make the definitive guide to dispersion in World of Warships. So after this you should have a very very good picture of how dispersion functions in the game and why at times you get pretty wonky things happening when you're aiming for a ship. So without any further hesitation let's get going. The very first thing that you have to understand is that when you fire your guns, what happens is a dispersion ellipse is drawn. And what that dispersion ellipse means is that all the shells that you fire are going to fall somewhere inside that dispersion ellipse. Now obviously, depending on the range that you're firing, whatnot, the dispersion ellipse can change in terms of your shape. For example, if you're very, very, very close at very close ranges, you have very, very little horizontal dispersion. However, your vertical dispersion tends to be very, very long. Um, and I'll show you how that affects where your shells go later on. Now, the dispersion ellipse is created using two variables. One of them is horizontal dispersion, and one of them is vertical dispersion. Horizontal dispersion, indicated by the teal line, is the value that you see inside your port. Now, the value that you see inside your port is the dispersion at maximum range. Obviously, at minimum range, it's not going to be that big, as horizontal dispersion increases in a linear manner. So if you were to actually plot it, you'd be able to see at various distances what your horizontal dispersion is going to be. Next up is vertical dispersion, as indicated by the green line. Now, vertical dispersion is not a value that you see in game, and there's very, very good reasons for that. Mostly because vertical dispersion is calculated through the ballistic performance of the guns, which is a combination of muzzle velocity, shell mass, and air drag values. Now, it's a little bit too much to pull out the ballistic calculators again and to crunch all the numbers and give you all the numbers. It's just a little overwhelming. So I'll give you kind of a bunch of rule of thumb, right? Ideally, you want to have low muzzle velocity with nice heavy shells. This ensures that you have still very, very good penetration, but downrange you have very tight overall uh, vertical dispersion values. That combined with very good horizontal dispersion values, and you have very, very tight dispersion ellipses. Examples of ships with these kinds of characteristics in game would be ships like North Carolina and Warspite, ships with relatively low muzzle velocity, nice heavy shells, so they still maintain good penetration, but they have very, very tight groupings. They do, of course, have one particular challenge, which is at distance, their shell travel times usually is a little bit slower, so it's a little bit harder to aim with them. However, once you master it, those guns tend to perform very, very consistently. Next up, we move into the realm of higher muzzle velocities. And typically speaking, with higher muzzle velocities, if you want to have better vertical dispersion, you want to have lighter shells. And again, all of this assuming standard air drag values. And air drag values can affect things quite dramatically, which I'll get to in a little bit. Now, with lighter shells, what ends up happening is the shells will lose a little bit more energy, and so the vertical dispersion will get a little bit smaller. If you have high muzzle velocity with heavy shells, those shells tend to maintain their velocities very, very well all the way through, which means that you tend to have pretty wild vertical dispersions. An example of the high muzzle velocity, high shell weight with really low air drag is Roma, actually. Roma is a ship with very, very big vertical dispersion ellipses. Um, if you compare Roma, which is you know the 15-inch shells, and you compare it to something like Bismarck, Bismarck's vertical dispersion is going to be a little bit better. Now, putting things more visually, right now you saw the teal color, that was Roma's dispersion, then you see the sort of violet color, that's Alabama's dispersion. Compare the two, you'll notice that Roma's a lot more crazy vertically, because Roma has high muzzle velocity, high shell weight, and very low air drag compared to Alabama, which is lower velocity, higher shell mass, and sort of standard air drag. It's quite a big difference um, when you take a look at how their dispersion plays out downrange. So how does this affect you as a player, and what impact does it have on the performance of your ship's guns? Well, let's take a look at it from, let's say, a normal, more player sort of view, right, where you see the side of a ship like this, and you've got your aim line set where the red line is. All right, so you've got two kinds of dispersion. You've got the yellow circle, which is the more elongated dispersion, and you have the green circle, which is the more um, compact dispersion, right? So one, you've got the really sort of high muzzle velocity, heavy shell weight, big long dispersion. The other one, you have the lower velocity, heavy shell weight, where you have that nice compact dispersion. And now you fire your salvo. And let's say you fired nine shells in total, and I've plotted, let's say, nine points inside that dispersion circle. 
and then I've drawn three lines, which is where the shells would travel, let's say, in order to get to those particular points inside the dispersion ellipse. And you will see from the three that I plotted that one is going to land short in the water, one is going to get pretty close to where the citadel placement is, and that's the hit that you're really aiming for, and then one will go really, really high because it's trying to hit a point further along the dispersion ellipse. The shot that goes high, if you take a look at sort of where it intersects with the ship, you'll notice that it hits kind of where maybe the funnels would be, and that's where you would get your overpen. Now, if I was to plot, let's say, all the other points as well and draw them, you would sort of see where the lines would touch the ship, and some of them would bounce right off the deck. Some of them might be sort of upper belt area where you get your penetration. Some of them would hit in the superstructure where, again, you'd get over penetration hits. Now, if you have a smaller vertical dispersion, right, and a smaller dispersion ellipse as a whole, your shells are gonna, they're gonna be a little bit more clustered. They're not going to end up as far away from the ship that you're targeting. So in a situation like this, imagine all nine shells coming in, they're gonna be traveling towards the ship to hit their various respective points, and the points at which they intersect with the ship is going to be closer to where you want them to land, to where you've aimed them. This allows you to, let's say, hit for more consistent damage, because even if you don't get that citadel, you're going to be at least hitting the, let's say, the belt armor or maybe the upper belt armor and getting that penetration damage instead. Compared to when you have that very long vertical dispersion, you have shells that are going to land further away from the ship, and so your shells, in order to reach that point, are going to travel higher. And by traveling higher, when they do intersect with the ship that, the, you're, that you're trying to hit, that they're going to hit like the superstructure or, you know, those really thin upper belts where you're going to end up getting overpens and you're going to get those very, very low damage totals. Okay, so continue to try to have you visualize this thing. And it's not always the easiest thing to do, but try it to follow me here. Um, the red dots in this particular one are the points of impact of where the shells would impact, right? So as you can tell, there's a bunch of them that actually impact the ship and a few of them that land a bit short. But try to visualize it as a three-dimensional plane, right? Which is what the yellow circle would be, right? That would be something that would extend from um, before the ship to after the ship. That would be the dispersion ellipse. Now, the points where uh, the shells hit the ship, if you continue to draw a dotted line through it, it'll eventually impact a point beyond the ship, right? It's just that those shells happen to have met the ship because the ship is obviously vertically blocking them. I know it's kind of a hard thing to explain, a kind of a hard thing to fully visualize at the beginning. But um, if you have a really big vertical dispersion uh, where the shells are oftentimes, let's say, going long, but the ship is blocking them, you'll see they tend to hit a little bit high. They'll hit higher up where, let's say, the secondary guns are, you know, where the superstructure is, and therefore do less damage. Or if you're shooting cruisers, for example, they might be hitting the upper belt armor where you often get a lot of those overpens. However, if your dispersion ellipse is smaller and your shells don't go as far away from the ship, then where they impact on the ship, again, remember your ship is vertically there blocking the shell from progressing to the point that it wants to reach on the dispersion ellipse, well, now you have a lot more hitting kind of where you're aiming, right? And this is why with the ships that have the nicer, um, smaller dispersion circles, you tend to get more of those very consistent damage salvos. So again, if you look at Roma versus, let's say, North Carolina, with the Roma, you're going to get either a lot more overpens, a lot more inconsistency when it comes to damage, while with the North Carolina, if you can master the way her shells behave and they travel and you don't need the best sort of laser arcs, you will tend to find that with North Carolina, you just get a lot more consistent damage levels. If someone gives you a broadside, with North Carolina, you'll see a lot more, let's say, 10k, 10k, 10k salvos, while with the Roma, you might see a 5k the next thing you know, you get like a 15k, and then the next salvo, you get another 5k salvo. But do keep in mind that the really fast shell speeds and everything, they do, of course, have their advantages as well. They just make it easier to lead shots at range. While with the North Carolina and its slower shells, it definitely takes a lot more practice and a lot more getting used to before you're effective. So there's sort of little pros and cons there. But in terms of just getting maximum number of shells onto target, and getting most consistent damage, the high muzzle velocity heavy shell weight is definitely not a good characteristic. So somebody must be asking, what is Sigma then? You know, you've heard this number a lot, what is it? You know, and you might have heard some people say, well, Sigma is vertical dispersion. No, absolutely it is not. Vertical dispersion and horizontal dispersion, as I showed earlier, is entirely their own thing. What Sigma is, however, is inside that dispersion ellipse, what is the percentage chance of your shells grouping towards more the center? 
right? That's kind of what sigma is. The higher the sigma, the more consistent your shells are likely to go to the center of the dispersion ellipse. Here's the perfect illustration for what I'm talking about. Here you have tests done on guns with the identical horizontal and vertical dispersions. And yet they look kind of different, don't they? The difference here is sigma. If you look at the red one, you'll notice the shells are just a little bit more dispersed. They're less likely to go to the center area. Well, with the orange dots, you'll notice that more of them are concentrated together in a lump. Now, for those of you who have guessed and guessed accurately, this is the difference between the Musashi and the Yamato. Musashi, identical guns to the Yamato, so her horizontal and vertical characteristics are exactly the same, but Musashi has 1.8 sigma compared to Yamato's 2.1 and you can tell the difference right away. The Yamato salvos, they tend to group up more towards the middle lump there. While with the Musashi, things are just a little bit more spread out. So, identical characteristics, identical dispersion ellipses, but the one with the sigma is going to be more consistent. So, to sum up everything that I've said, when you fire, your shells fall inside a dispersion ellipse. That dispersion ellipse is determined by the horizontal and vertical dispersion which again, horizontal is the value you see in port and vertical dispersion is calculated through ballistic calculations. And your sigma determines the percentage chance of your shells going towards the center of the ellipse. Now, if you're looking for best possible dispersion, most consistent kind of salvos, what you're looking for is a good sigma value. So something like 2.0 sigma combined with lower muzzle velocity and high shell weight. A good example of this in game is the British battleship War Spite. Anyways, I hope this video has been helpful in explaining dispersion to all of you. If you have any questions still, make sure to leave those in the comment section below. And I'm sure myself or other people who are now comfortable with this concept will be happy to explain it to you. Aside from all that, folks, take care, have yourselves a good one, and I'll talk to all of you again next time.